So now as we go to wrapping up what we've been talking about on the coronavirus, we've done a series on studying the relationship between the coronavirus pandemic, our concerns about the vaccine, you know, our caution about uh, uh, the new world order teaching and uh, the antichrist, the emergence of the antichrist. We've done all that. We also have talked about. So what will happen? at the end mm. of the world, when all this is over. Having said that and done, we are wrapping up our series. And uh, I've titled this Lockdown in His Presence, because this is where we are. We are all locked down. Mm. <laughs> so the choice is uh, uh, how will you be locked down? Be locked down in his presence, or you will be locked down in frustration, in distress, in anxiety. Um, the choice is ours, but I'm here today to say, let us be locked down in his presence. And this is what I'm going to articulate today. But before I go into it, once again, we're live streaming from Harare, Zimbabwe, Africa, and we're excited to be uh, uh, with you on this uh, service, His Presence Ministries International Church. I'm Apostle Petunia Kiriseri, and I'd like to greet all our valuable uh, viewers and, uh, and streamers, followers, but also our daughters, our sons and our daughters uh, who are joining us on these services from all over the world. Mm -hmm. We love you, we miss you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are excited to be with you. Let us pray. So, Father, we thank you one more time for your presence. We thank you that in your presence there is fullness of joy, and at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. We are here to worship you, to lift up your name. And so, minister to us, minister to our hearts. Father, may your word that I share, Heavenly Father, bless us. May your word heal us. May your word relieve us from anxiety. And may your word bring joy, peace, and happiness. Joy in the Holy Ghost, we pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. So as I wrap up this series today, uh, locked down in his presence, I'm basically talking about what then should we do? Some countries have been on lockdown. Um, our daughter's in New York. It's how many weeks now? And uh, other daughters in Cyprus, I don't know how many weeks, and uh, no different nations. It's been weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks on end. And um, what then should we be doing? What then should we do? So much time. Mm. I want us to celebrate. Mm. Mm. Where else have we ever had so much time to do nothing? <laughs> 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 For me, I think it's just one of the greatest moments of my life, you know, to just wake up and do nothing. If I, if, I, if I want. So, you know, it's a great opportunity uh, for us to focus on our well-being, which really is the most important thing. Amen. Focus on what really matters in life. You know, your health, you know, your family, making a difference in somebody's life. Mm. Really, at the end of the day, this lockdown is teaching us just that, yeah. that those are the things that really matter to God. Yes, his presence ministers international we've just started collecting a docker's box you know of groceries because you know in zimbabwe and i'm sure in other african countries uh, the majority of our people live from hand to mouth mm. so being in lockdown means i can't sell my jiggies 
means I can't sell my maputi, means I cannot sell my tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And normally, after I've sold that, that's how I've got money to buy mini meal and um, vegetables and cooking oil for my meal. So making a difference in somebody's life. Those are the things that really matter in life. And so I'm going to share from two perspectives, from the physical and, if you like, emotional aspect, and then from the spiritual aspect. And so, from the physical aspect, what should I be doing with all this time? Mm. Get off that phone. Mm. <laughs> Just speaking from experience and uh, experience with my children at home, it is very easy, mm. literally, to spend the rest of your lockdown season just, you know, reading what's, what, what's been said now, what's happening now. So, give yourself time off from the phone, switch it off if you can. Mm. So, from a physical perspective, rest, rest well. Where have you ever seen free uh, leave days um, like this? Enjoy, enjoy your time with self, me time, family time, mm. just enjoy, enjoy life. For the first time, get up and do nothing, sit in the sun outside and feel no guilt. Mm. How is that? <laughs> How is that for a good time? You know what? I believe as a child of God, we must know certain scriptures that are, are coping mechanisms. Romans 8, 28 tells me that all things, mm. all things, including coronavirus, pandemic, uh, COVID-19, lockdown, mm. all things work together for good to them that love the Lord mm. and are called according to his purposes. I, I call it the Genesis 50-20 strategy. Mm. Yeah, what the enemy meant for evil, you right. turn it around for good. Amen. So, you know, I'm turning it around for my good, slipping in, sleep until the sleep is finished, mm. where there is no need for an alarm. Why not? You know, and uh, so enjoy your sleep, sleep well, rest well, eat well, mm. you know, uh, this is the time really for we've been told, uh, citrus fruits, if you can get as much fruit and fresh vegetables, just enjoy John 10, 10 B. Mm. Hey, it's only the thief, the devil who comes to steal, to kill and to destroy, but Christ say, I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. So enjoy, you know, uh, rebuilding your health, so to speak. I repeat, vitamin D is something we should not uh, leave out, even as part of building our immune immunity against catching the virus. Mm. We need all the vitamins. You need your vitamin C from your oranges, your lemons, you know, any fruits and uh, vegetables, but also just the sunshine, go bask. Yes. Let's go enjoy. Why not? I keep saying to myself, I'm actually preaching to myself because mm. some of us have always been on the go, mm. you know, mm. so much so that even at a time like this, you, if you're not careful, you can even feel guilty for sitting and say, uh uh, why not? Mm. So, and also eat together. And you know, it's a time for us to just eat together as family. How many times uh, do families just, you know, go into the kitchen and, you know, each man for himself and God for us all? Ah, no, this is a time to just rebuild the family. Just for times of celebration. Meal times are meant to be celebration times because it is God who, who, who provides. And yes. so whenever he's provided, you know, they sit around, gather together, and, you know, Practice some of those uh, family uh, cultures that get lost in the business of life. You know, pray together as a family, which I'll probably touch again when we go into the spiritual aspect, rebuilding the family altar, which has been forgotten, you know, over the years, so to speak, in the business of life. But also, as you take care of your well-being, why not start on some stretch exercises? Why not walk around the garden just being careful there's no, uh, we are safe, mm -hmm. no police, no, as long as you are gated, you know, um, 
some stretch exercises. I actually got some, uh, I got some sent to me the other day so that, you know, we could do that with my daughter and my, yeah, with my two daughters. Yeah, catch up on, literally, there's so much to do. Basically, I'm saying fight, we've been saying fight fear, but today I'm saying fight boredom. Mm -hmm. You know, refuse to be bored. Mm -hmm. <laughs> boredom is a choice, refuse to be bored. And uh, why not catch up on some, uh, on some thorough cleaning, you know? Sometimes when we are following up on, uh, uh, following up on new things, you know, you'll be going, ah, we didn't see you, the church is everything okay, you know? And then someone will say, ah, no, I was doing some thorough cleaning mm -hmm. on a Sunday. <laughs> During a Sunday, so this is the time to do it. Not when times become normal again, God willing. And uh, so, so acquire a new skill, you know? Just have something to add to your CV to say, you know, in the uh, lockdown season, I was able to acquire whether it's baking or cooking skills or, you know, go on some on short online course, you know, if you need to fill up your time. But all I'm saying is fight boredom. Refuse to be bored. Because all things, including the lockdown, must work together for your good. So there's so much that you can and should be doing as opposed to just wondering, oh, another week, oh, you know. Just enjoy your life. And spiritually, I want to look at what else we should be doing. Prayer. Uh, in Luke chapter 11, uh, verse 1, we read, Now Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Listen to this, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. So, it is clear when I read that scripture that we need to teach one another. To pray prayer is taught because the reason why we don't pray sometimes is because we don't know how to pray so if you go on to verse 2 Jesus actually unpacks how to pray how you start you know our father you know who art in heaven how you start with worship you know hallowed be thy name lift up his name I don't want to get lost into that but literally the stages of prayer you know acknowledging who he is, acknowledging your relationship with him, before you start saying, God, can I have a meal for tomorrow? And so on. So prayer must be taught. And this is what I'm teaching very quickly today as to what should we be doing? We should be building ourselves up spiritually in our most holy faith. So this is a, a quick teaching on how to pray. Listen to Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses for we do not know um, what to pray for as we ought but the spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words and he who searches our hearts he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of the father so it is important that we be taught how to pray. What are some of the things that are practical things that are important to know for you to deepen your spiritual life, for you to enrich your relationship with God. Have a consistent place of prayer daily. There's no excuse now. Have a consistent time because we've got 24 7 to ourselves invite the holy spirit because it is him who teaches us to pray and it is him who helps us to intercede and who not only intercedes for us but he teaches us even intercessory prayers which are more powerful than just praying for me myself and i the unholy trinity we call it Jude uh, uh, 1 verse 20 says, But ye, beloved, building up yourself, praying in the Holy Ghost. Um, we must build ourselves up in the Holy Spirit. So it is important to invite the Holy Spirit. Pray in tongues. If you're not sure how, maybe another session, another time, we can talk about the infilling of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, 
And so if you stay tuned to our Sunday services, the 10 and Wednesday services over lunch, Zimbabwe time, uh, for GMT time, one o'clock, um, we will, for 30 minutes, be continuing, 30 to 40 minutes, be continuing on this series. So have a specific place, have a specific time with God, have, make a date with God, have a consistent um, a follow through how you pray, even as Jesus taught them in Luke chapter 1 verse 2. Follow through, you will see it is important to worship him, to acknowledge your relationship with him, to engage with him as your father to have a relationship with him. And if you don't have a relationship with him, at the end of the service, I will lead you, if you need, to make sure that your relationship with God, you are in a good space. You are in a good place with God. And so, n next, t next thing about uh, prayer is pray the word. Pray the word. Why? Because... When we pray the word, we activate the activity of angels. In this case, we have uh, uh, we're surrounded surrounded with uh, all these threats of a, of a pandemic. And uh, when we pray the word, the word works. Work the word, and the word will work for you. And so, it is very important that you pray the word. The word are just the promises of God. Let's give praise to God, but also let's give Him back His word. And as we speak his word, he honors his word. His word never returns to him void. His word is like the rain. His word accomplishes that for which he purposed it to. So pray the word. That is how we pray the will of the Father. My Bible tells me you have not because you do not pray. My Bible also tells me that you have not because you pray amiss. And so for us to not pray amiss, it is not only important to pray in the spirit of praying tongues, it is important to pray the word because you pray his will. His word is his will. His word is his, is, 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 is his ways. And so we do not want to be like the children of Israel. My Bible tells me they only saw the acts of God. They only knew the acts of God in Psalm 1 or 3. Whereas Moses knew the ways of God. So to know the ways of God, you have to pray the will of God, which is the word of God. And he will teach you his ways and you become his child. And so use the word as you pray. And uh, most importantly, when you pray, listen. As you read the word, God speaks to us. But also as we pray, God speaks to us. So there's time to speak to God. There's time to listen to God. Remember, we are in a relationship with him. So if you're in a relationship with someone, you would be a very boring companion if you don't know where to put commas and full stops. <laughs> so it is very important to have time to also hear what the Spirit say. Because he speaks. I'll give you an example of how he speaks. When we were praying in December, the first week of December, we had a leadership meeting at our headquarters. And uh, as we were praying, the Spirit of God just simply told me there will be no conference in April. We're supposed to start our conference today, actually, interestingly, the day before Easter. And as we were praying, the Spirit of God just dropped in my spirit. There will be no conference. So tell the leaders, don't worry, we're not preparing for conference this year. Hello. And uh, the Spirit of God is prophetic. And so it hit me just the other day as we were preparing for our Easter service that, wow, God actually showed us that there will be no conference. You know, so listen. When we pray, take time to listen. God speaks and he directs your paths. He says the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. So he orders our steps when we talk to him, when we take that time. Take time apart a while, like Jesus would do. But Jesus needed to pray, and he was the son of God, and he was God himself. How much more you and I? Number two. Building yourself up spiritual is what I'm talking about. The word. We've already talked about that. Proverbs 4 verse 20. Listen. My son, be attentive to my word. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let my words not escape from your sight. From reading the word of God. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them. And listen to this. 
They are healing to all of their flesh. You are sick. Maybe you are COVID-19 positive, HIV positive, or whatever other positive. The word of the Lord is healing to your flesh. It is important that you read the word, meditate on the word. And I want to teach on how to read the Bible. How do I read my Bible? Because as pastors, we keep saying, you must read your Bible, you must read your Bible, but sometimes you don't have the time. And in this session, I just want to unpack quickly. Because sometimes you don't read the word because you don't know how to read the word of God. So step number one, before you read his word, okay, have some kind of prayer guide. I said you can join us on our, on our, our Facebook page, I don't know whether to be. I don't know whether it's posted also on our. Um, I don't know where, but Facebook page is the safest. We go through the Bible from Genesis to Revelations from January to December, so you can join us, or you can find any other. You can download any other, you know, from the internet. But have a a routine, have a schedule, have a a guide. That today I'm reading from this. Take bite sizes of the Bible. There's some people that can read 10 chapters, like Apostle Charles Jerusalem used to. You take your bite size, that's enough for you. Okay, so number one, have a schedule, a, a word reading guide or a schedule. Number two, pray. Before, pray to the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the one who inspired the men of old and the prophets of old. And the Holy Spirit is he who reveals the truth. And the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So you don't read the Bible like you read a novel. You read the Bible expectant, an expectant heart, expecting to hear from the author, the Holy Spirit, who was inspired, who, who was sent by God to inspire the man of old and the prophets of old. So that you can hear the voice of God. Number three. It's most important. As you read, hear the voice of God. How do I hear the voice of God? Okay, you read the narrative. That's fine. This is what happened. But what does that mean to me? That's now uh, meditating or understanding with your spirit man what God is saying. What is the narrative? What is God saying? And... How do I apply that? In other words, what does that mean to me in my everyday life? So, most importantly, memorize the word as part of meditation. Memorize the word. Instead of struggling with your thoughts and, uh, and wondering how will I fall asleep today. I'm talking about myself, for example. Last night I really couldn't, you know, find sleep. And so, instead of just battling with wandering thoughts or a busy mind, that's all over. You know, I, I, I started trying to see how many scriptures I can remember. You know, uh, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He may get me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me, uh, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. Righteousness for his name's sake. He prepares a table for me. He anoints my head with oil. My cup runs over. He prepares a table for me before my enemies. Anoints my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I started trying to find out how much do I remember of Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty and shall say of the Lord, my God, my, ro my, God, my rock, my fortress, in him will I trust. Surely he will deliver me from the snare of the foul and from the deadly pestilence. And um, he will cover me with his wings and under his feathers I will take refuge. This is you instead of me. Wandering thoughts. Some people don't know what to do with their thoughts. Meditate on the word of the Lord. Memorize the word of God for time's sake. I need to move on. So this book of the Lord, Joshua chapter 1 says, shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do 
according to all that is written in it, but so that you may make your way prosperous. That is the secret of success as a child of God. And you have good success. So that's how you read the word of God. And of course, God will speak to you, have a notebook, and write stuff down. Why? Because Matthew 35 says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. My words remain. And so, it doesn't matter what happens to the world. As long as you have the word in you, you have God in you. Because God and his word are one. And you're good to go. You're in a good space. You're in a good place. That's what drives away fear. That's what drives away boredom. I just took two out of five. So join me for the next short series. Um, so that we can look at the other three practical things that you can be doing to build yourself up spiritually at this time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. And I pray that you enjoyed this. And uh, I pray that you can sit down, maybe with your children. Sometimes you don't even have time to teach our children how to pray, how to read the word of God. You may just also have been saying, oh, I know that. Oh, I know that. But your children know that. Does your friend know that? So it's good for you to share and just help somebody to enrich their lives, you know, emotionally, but also spiritually, so that they're locked down in his presence. God bless you.